Hey, talk to us about um, a sad day in many ways at UBA, at Zenith Bank and at Sky. What has prompted this? Uh, the new central bank governor saying there is a need to limit the tenure of bank executives. Why is that? Well, it's really part of the, the whole drive to improve corporate governance in Nigeria. As you know, last year we had a huge banking crisis with nine banks being rescued by the central, by the central bank in a huge bailout, um, costing the bank about $4 billion. $4 billion. So essentially, this is all part of the reforms that have followed that move. And like you mentioned, three banks, UBA, um, Sky Bank, and um, Zenith Bank are changing um, the helms of power today. Starting with UBA, we have Tony Ulimelu handing over to Philip Oduoza. And Tony, I think the legacy that Tony brings um, with his experience at UBA and prior to that, Standard Trust Bank is really more that of a dynamic culture and aggressive growth culture. Um, Zen UBA, for instance, today um, is a Pan-African bank with um, operations in 16 countries. So we've seen him, him drive that, that process of taking UBA across Africa. So I think that will be his legacy mm -hmm. there. For Zenith, I think it will really be bringing that technology and customer service culture, which came in in the 90s. Interestingly, in Nigeria, before, before then, we meant you could go to several banks and you will not be able to transact um, unless you were going to the bank that you opened the account. Well, all that has changed. We have banks all online, real time now. You can go to any branch where, across the country and transact business. But it wasn't so before. And it was really the likes of Zenith Bank and um, possibly GTB that really led that move. And for um, Prudent Bank, uh, rather for Sky Bank, we had um, Akinshola Akifemiwa um, handing over to Kende Durosimi Eti. I think his legacy really is bringing Sky Bank to the forefront because Sky, Sky Bank emerged from the merger of five banks um, in, during the consolidation of the Nigerian banking sector in 2005. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see that that bank has really stood strong. And, it's, and prior to the crisis that we had in the sector last year, it was one of those banks that was making a very strong push to move into the top tier um, segment of the industry. So really, I think in some, that will be their legacy. Okay, Wale, uh, what do you know about the incoming CEOs? And as you've taken us through each bank and what the legacy of the previous CEO is. Tell us what the challenges for the incoming CEO will be. I mean, starting with the challenges, obviously it's with the situation in the banking sector right now. Yes, I think things are beginning to stabilize, but um, there are still some uh, concerns as to how the, the, the sector will grow from here. I mentioned earlier that the central bank is pushing a lot of reforms forward and one of those reforms is the setting up of specialized banks. So it's, we'll wait to see how many of these banks will um, emerge out of this period. We have some banks are likely to emerge as m uh, focusing on, on merchant banking business, particularly the smaller banks. But I, looking at these three institutions, I think they are one of those that will continue to make a push to, to be amongst the top tier of the industry. Um, but in terms of um, the transition, I think it's also important to note that um, it was pretty seamless, in, I think, in most of these institutions. In general, we, we've, we had this announcement um, several months ago. The policy actually came out in January, and I think very quickly all of these institutions had already nominated um, successors for the, the outgoing CEOs.